Hello, welcome to the Tutors of Life podcast where we research life so you don't have to. Episode 248, this is your host Sean Tudor. And this is Sam. This is a talk episode where the tutors talk. I need a haircut really bad. Do you? Is your hat getting a little tight? Yep. Dude, did you like Dom's like skater boy hair? No. No? No. You didn't miss it? No, dude. I honestly looked at that and I'm like, God, dude, I fucking that that hairstyle that every kid has from like 10 to 16 mm-hmm. just needs to go mm-hmm. needs to go it's like the longer hair that they like swish to the side i remember i grew that out i grew out hair like that from from 12 to 14 mm-hmm. and then at 14 i was like fuck it this ain't me. Mm-hmm. Buzzed head from then on out. Always buzzed high and tight. Boom. Nice. And then I don't know why. I have no idea what made me. But I started growing out the comb over. You don't remember why you started growing it out? Mm. Like to get the pony or... No, no, because I went, I always had a shaved head. No, yeah. Um, I didn't like it. No, but that before you. Yeah. Or so, so, so I had a shaved head, and then when I was 19. You started the comb over? I think I know what it was. What was it? Peaky Blinders. I could see that. I watched Peaky Blinders, and I grew out a comb over after that. Peaky blinders is why I quit shaving my head. Nice. And then you, because you did ask me at one point if you should. So I had a comb over for like two years then, no, um, up to knowing you. And then I shaved it all off. I don't know why, just for the hell of it, I guess. Mm-hmm. And you asked me if you should shave it again, and I said yeah. no. Yeah, you said grow it out. I was like, all right, whatever. Yeah. And then you grew out the pony, the man bun, for a bit. Mm-hmm. Did he remember that you guys placed that bet? I don't think so. I don't think so either. It's worth it, though. Uh-huh. Had a man pony for a little bit. Mm-hmm. And now I'm trying to convince Sean to grow out, like, uh, witcher hair. Fuck that, dude. I would never do that. It was worth a shot. That's so... No. It wouldn't look right because it's not white. And you don't have any curl in your hair. No. Your hair is straight as can be. Yeah. I would look so weird. Mm-hmm. So anyways, we're not doing that. Um, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. It's Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did have that haircut for, well, I cut it that short once. The what? skater bar hair. Almost. I remember. You looked like a dude. Mm-hmm. It looked terrible. Yeah. Did you think it looked terrible back then? Um, I think I liked it, but I never cut it that short again. Like, because from then on, I grew out my hair. And I think it was because I was called a boy once, and then I was like, nope, growing my hair out. I legitimately, when I saw pictures of you, I was like, yeah, that looks like a dude. Mm-hmm. Looks like a boy. Yep. Because um, there's a huge tomboy in high school, too, so I, like, dressed like a boy, which didn't help. Um... So, yeah, and then that's what made me um, grow up my hair. And then the shortest I've cut it since was last year. I think it lo- I think you look better with short hair. Really? Like last year's short hair? Mm-hmm. Oh, that looks good. What do you think? I don't know. I feel like I like the short hair just because otherwise I put it up all the time. Right. And when I have short hair, then I'd like... It, it sits nicer, too, actually, right. I think. So you don't put it up all the time? Yeah. Because you just live with your hair up. Yeah. You used to always do braids, which braids are fine, but you don't do that anymore. You I just, know. Yeah, so, like, if you're going to keep your long hair... I have to do something yeah, with it. Yeah, you got to do something with it. Otherwise, it's fucking, like... I'm just looking at the same shit every day, and it's getting pretty old. <laughs> you too, babes. Love you, babe. Wait chill all right damn you're acting like your hair doesn't look the same every single day bish i put a hat on all the time though oh and a different hat i do put different hats on so i'm always changing it up for you what do you think i mean i could 
I can't grow out the sides. I can't stop fucking itching my head because, like, the sides are never this long. Yeah. Look like a damn bum. Mm, you kind of do. I do. I do. The question is, when I go in there next, I said it to the to to Laura like two months ago. I was like, I think we just fucking shave it all. No. And she was just like, your wife would be so thrilled. And I was like, that's what I'm saying. I like her. That's what I'm saying. She knows. Yeah, she knows. She she we talked about that then. She's like, yeah. She's like, I've I've had guys come in here. Like old old guys. Mm-hmm. So I've had older guys come in, retired guys come in, tell me they want their hair cut like this. So I cut their hair like that. She's like, I will have their wives coming in, 70-year-old ladies coming in, screaming at me for cutting their husband's hair like that. And she's like, that's what they told me to do. And I was like, damn. And she's like, I don't want to get yelled at. Mm-hmm. Didn't she's like, like a tough girl too. Oh, she would beat all these people bitches up yeah dude. she she actually talked to her it was funny how like because she owns the business with her daughter now mm-hmm. and how um she's just like very very straight up honest like get fucked if you're rude mm-hmm. and now she's like trying to be nicer because she it's not just her business it's also her daughter's business so she can't just be like pushing people out the door if they piss her off right and i'm like yeah it makes sense that sucks yeah i mean there's pros and cons to it yeah so i think passing on a business to like your spot who are interested in it mm-hmm. yeah that's that's cool that part is really cool yeah yeah because you said she like goes away for a couple months out of the year now mm-hmm. that's that's cool mm-hmm. yeah it's cool i like that place mm-hmm. um so anyways um it's thanksgiving Mm -hmm. we took a nap today yeah that felt so good uh yeah it was good and so uh ate some steak Mm -hmm. ate some thanksgiving lunch Mm -hmm. did some bowling did some bowling how did bowling go pretty good Mm -hmm. my fingers jammed as shit so that sucked yeah but uh Ended up bowling okay. Pretty yeah. good. You and I were pretty close. Yeah. Um, for bowling once a year, I thought I did all right. Mm. We should go more often. No, it's all right. Okay. Um, I kind of like just going once a year. Do you? I yeah. should really go with my mom more. If you were like, hey, babe, we should go like golf more or something. That would turn you on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, maybe go to the Dirty Birdie together. My mom wants to go, too. Does she? Yeah. I'd be down. Mm -hmm. I'd be down. Yeah. What else we got? What's new? What's cracking? Um, the office is up and running. We're moving into the office. Yeah. Uh, we moved stuff last weekend. Mm Mm-hmm. And then we started, we got it all set up and ready to go Monday morning. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. I'm very excited for it. Mm. I'm very, very happy for it. Um, these two hooligans are also, I think, very happy about it. Fucking, yep. Um, I've been, it's, yesterday I was I kind of bummed out. I didn't um, do much after work yesterday. But uh, I'm really excited because now the dogs go uh, to the office with Sean. And then when they come home, they just want to sleep because yep. they're used to sleeping all day. But they don't when people are around. Right. So... It was just really nice because yesterday I came home and Mimi just wanted to like snuggle on the couch. So we just snuggie down the couch. Mm-hmm. So that was really nice. But in the next couple of weeks, then I'll start working on stuff in the afternoon because I won't feel guilty for not paying attention to the dogs. I'm I'm fucking stupid excited for it. Mm-hmm. I'm very happy. I can't wait to get weight equipment in there. Yeah, that'll be cool. And uh, in a kitchen. I'm, oh, yeah. yeah. Weight equipment in a kitchen, dude. I'm going to fucking live there. Yeah. Well, we could just live there. Should we just live there? No. Um, okay. Are you going to fix the heater in my office? No. Deal with being cold. Okay. Keep going. I, I, I did, that was my thing. Just whatever. We got some fixes to do on the place yet, but it's workable. Yeah. And so, yeah, the dogs have been enjoying it. 
Sean's been enjoying it. Brooke, I think, is really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited. It'll be good. It'll be fun. Yeah, Yeah, it's really good. Got to get some shit up there. Mm -hmm. Four wheeler. Yeah. It's plow. Yeah. Snowblower. Yeah. Fuck. Fuck. What? I just hate how fast. Time goes. Time goes. Yeah. Um. It is almost December. We have like 37 days left in the year. How crazy is that? I just ain't ready. Neither am I. I'm not ready for winter. No. I'm terrified of 2024 now. Why? Because of future plans we're thinking of. Oh. Mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's growing, evolving. Mm-hmm. We'll make it through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll make it through. Mm-hmm. But so, yeah, uh, I was just telling Sean the other day, uh, literally, the summertime went nice and like slow and chill for us. We didn't have a whole lot of things, which was nice for once. And then um, it was September, and now it's November. Nope, now it's almost December. I don't know what happened to those three months at all. Me neither. Wild. Mm-hmm. Time is very weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm super happy. I'm, 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 I'm grateful. I'm grateful for how things mm-hmm. are going mm-hmm. for life. We just saw the coolest post. About if you're grateful for something, to, like, really show that you're grateful. So, like, if you're grateful for your, like, body and your health, like, do everything you can to show your gratitude. So, be the healthiest you can be. Right. If you're grateful for your friends and family, then make sure you're, like, putting in the effort to, like, keep those connections and to hang out with them Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And it was just, like, a different, like, perspective of it that I never thought of. of like, right. We say our gratefuls every single night, but what do we do to, like, prove that we're grateful? Right. Eat a couple pieces of pie at Thanksgiving. <laughs> and then how many cookies did you have? I've had three so far. I'm not going to have any more, so I hope you know that. I'll bring it to the office tomorrow. Smart. Let Brooke scrounge on a couple. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So yeah, I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. It's such a good day to have that on Thanksgiving. Yeah, it is. A lot of people. So many posts were about gratitude and, mm-hmm. and being thankful and stuff. Avoid. I don't have my glasses on. Can you read that up there? Avoid greed, gluttony, and lust. Seek Thanksgiving. There you go. Mm-hmm. Seven deadly sins. That's right. Mm-hmm. Holy smokes, babe. What? What else is going on? Um, Is there like something big that I'm missing? No. Your car. Jeez. The old car might not be doing so hot. Yeah. So we knew it needed like a transmission flush or something mm-hmm. because it was grinding in two gears a little bit. And we we're just like, you know... We'll get a transmission flush at the next oil change. But that was like 3,000 miles away. Shouldn't have waited that long. No. It started making noise. So anyways, we'll get that diagnosed. Yeah. You brought it to a transmission place now? Mm-hmm. Lame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the original mechanic on the phone said it could be... A range of things. Kind of just hoping it might be an acorn in there. Why the fuck would an acorn be in the transmission? How does that even happen? Well, how would that happen? I don't know. Squirrels get in places. They bring food with them. No, there'd be some leaks and shit. Oh, okay. I honestly just hope it's a clutch. Yeah. I just hope it's a clutch. Which, that's what I think it is. But we're going to find out. How much is a clutch? A couple grand? Uh, it depends. It just depends. The clutch itself is only probably few hundred bucks and it'll just depend on like if they tell us that and i look it up 
depending on how hard it is to change it on a Volkswagen, mm. will depend if like we can just do it. You know, like you and Kyle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because like I got a quote on a, a clutch for <clears throat> like a Volk or for like a Ford Escort a couple of years ago, and it was like twelve hundred bucks. So I don't know. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Should also see if uh, cause didn't was it you that said about like the CVTC thing? Like, uh, or was it one of your clients that needed a new clutch and brought it to CVTC and they, cause they have like the mechanic yeah. program. Mm-hmm. Yep. So like they were able to get like a clutch for really cheap. Yeah. Yep. Cause they obviously have to learn somehow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Um, hopefully it's not too bad. Mm-hmm. I'm just driving my big truck around. Mm-hmm. Which that's also making noises. Oh, it's just the power steering mm-hmm. shit. Dude, wow. I freaked out today because I was like, we got done with bowling and we walked out to my car and there is a puddle of something like the, the under like the front end of my car. And I was like, oh no, like do not tell me my car is also leaking something. It wasn't from my car. It wasn't from your car. So we were all good. But still, I like I had a moment of panic. Oh, I know. I love that thing. It's the best. It's a good car. Mm-hmm. Good car. What else you got? Man, I don't even know. I've been doing a lot of jujitsu. Yeah, you have. Love that shit. Been a lot of fun. Um. Recon's coming mm-hmm. up in fucking three months. Yeah. I think the counter's like 85 days. 85 days, huh? I think wow. so. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Pretty exciting. Um, speaking of, yeah, the the, the code, the, the early bird special is only going on for six more days. Mm-hmm. So if Fair. you guys want that for 59 bucks. If you're a recon member. No, if you're a Wiscoria member. Oh, yeah. Wiscoria member. You're a recon for 59 bucks only. Uh, only through the 29th. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that. Um, let's see. What else we got? Um, I was, yeah, we were chatting about uh, possibly doing or, or seeing what it would take or to do to have a retreat for all the Wiscoria hosts. Mm-hmm. That's kind of cool. Um, I th- AJ and I talked about it and. And Joe and Chris and Jason and all of us talked about it. <clears throat> and um, just the camaraderie, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, we've done a couple, like, group, like, mastermind retreats and whatnot. And it is a really good way to, like, bring a group of, group of people together, like, closer together. Oh, 100%. Because you talk to other, like, people that you don't, don't normally talk to. Um, that one would be fun, like, if... Just because you guys aren't even... You don't get the opportunity to talk in the first place, right. really. So that'll be a really good way to like bring you all together, and then, like we said, kind of form some friendships, but also form some fun little rivalries. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we got a little rivalry with Joe in Green Bay, mm-hmm. and it's just fun, dude. It's fun, it, and you wouldn't. That's what so. I asked myself, like, when's that, like, what is my, like, how long would I want to be a part of Wisco Rhea, right? Mm-hmm. Um, kind of was, like, asking myself that, not sure. But after, like, the last two weeks going around with AJ to the other locations and seeing all the hosts and, and stuff, I'm like, man, this is a, a really fun organization um, that I'm really happy to be a part of. Um and it's like, uh, you know, as long as, as we're growing and, like, trying to help people and especially for getting together to, like, better each other. Like, mm-hmm. the hosts get better, little rivalries and competitions against each other and, like, doing retreats and learning from each other and all that shit. That, the more you do that, the more you're going to get buy-in and the longer people are going to want to be with the the organization you know Mm -hmm. like i wouldn't want to i i wouldn't want to leave the organization if that's how it was Mm -hmm. yeah you know 
So I, I think shit like that's very important. And, and honestly, you just take that. You take that aspect with any business you're a part of, any business organization you're a part of. That's why I kind of think about like um, um, from at home work, work from home. Mm-hmm. Do when you're not able to build that camaraderie, how much like buy-in and love do you have for your company? You know, you don't have those 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 relationships and, and that time spent with others and shit. Yeah. And so I I think that's something big that we take for granted. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um. Sorry. Yeah. No, I think I think that shit's uh buy in with your company doing things to build camaraderie are all things to help like drive a vision Mm -hmm. yeah i think that's something i miss is like working in any mall job you you get to see like your numbers every day Mm -hmm. so like you have a goal within your store every single day to beat your last year's numbers like, it's always a goal, right? Mm-hmm. And so we always know at the beginning of the day, like, okay, this is the sales from last year. We got to beat this for this year. But then also there's, like, the, the like little rivalries with, like, other stores. Because, mm-hmm. like, we'd send emails to other stores or, like, Frank would always call other store managers and whatnot. And it was, like, f- it was fun for him to be, like, oh, like, I see you guys are at this. Well, like especially when we did the photo labels yeah yeah like, yeah yeah frank would call and be like oh i got 10 label like photo labels already today how many do you have yeah like so he was always like really good at that too of like keeping a little rivalry between other store managers uh-huh i bet you got even more interesting when his son became a store manager of another oh one. i bet you mm. i bet you they were ripping at each mm. other but hmm. so yeah i mean every mall job i've had we've always had that um and there's something like I kind of I've missed at Gold Star because at Gold Star we don't do anything with that. Um, yeah. During Christmas time we uh, we do have like a chart of the previous year orders and whatnot, like how many orders we got. Uh, but that's like not something that we can really push or try to like improve because we're not the salespeople. Right. So like, it's fun for us to try and like make sure we can beat the time like that our time frame is but it's just we can't put like we can't help how many orders there are in a day you know what i mean uh-huh like it's not it's not the same because we can't push the sales to increase our orders do you think you like you you kind of like sales then kind of how could we take that same thing and put it into like the construction company? Um, by um probably by seeing like especially when we do customer jobs, right? Uh huh. So by taking how much uh like sales and customer jobs we had the previous year for that month, and like being like okay, so like last year August we got. Twenty thousand dollars in customer jobs. What are we gonna do to, in like increase that this year or whatever? So like that one kind of drives the guys to go a little bit faster, because the more jobs they get done, the more money we get. Two that drives the sales guys to then get more projects coming in and to get maybe like not in the, not so much like higher prices but just to make sure like it is like good solid projects coming in it's not just a day project that you're only getting a thousand dollars for it's a day project that you're getting ten thousand dollars for um so like not doing the little things i guess as much maybe um so yeah i just think like things like that could help you for customer jobs at least but then that's why the flips are a little bit harder because, I mean, yes, we can always say, like, okay, last year we did five flips, so our goal this year is to do six. Well, what if we have a really intense one that has a higher profit than one of the one, like, than most of the ones from last year? That still only counts as one flip. So unless we do, like, profits from flips? I don't know. What do you think? What do you got going? Like you do it broken down into one week and one month. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. For flips? Or Everything. just anything. Okay. One week and one month. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you got three different layers. You got the rivalry between the construction guys. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that that could be like who's so so the rivalry between the construction guys, rivalry between the um the sales team and rivalry between the um the sales team, which is the closers, the actual construction guys, and the the project manager. Okay. Okay. Um and how that could the, probably like the project manager and like if there's another general contractor. Yeah. Or like two, you know what I'm saying? Could be done for flips and for customer work. I think it would all be based on profit margin. It would not be based on project. Okay. So f- for your salespeople, it would be who sold more profit. Okay. Right? Because if you sold a $20,000 job, I sold a $50,000 job, but your $20,000 job you're making 10 grand on mm-hmm. profit and my $50,000 job I'm making $15,000 on, it'd be like my job is way fucking worse than yours. Right. So, I think it's based on profit margin for the sales side, right? The construction team side, whether it's like a team versus a team or a guy versus a guy, I think you could do like daily goals kind of thing like almost like who gets more trim done or like who gets more doors put whatever it is right mm-hmm. like you could have a little like who did this faster better efficient whatever right and mm-hmm. like or if you had teams who who closed out a project faster or like who right how many days like of uh like Days of the project did you save or something? Oh, you know what it would be? It would be um how many how many days or like how many hours you beat the quote by. Mm. So like and this is like flooring one oh one. Because you can keep track of that like throughout the project. Hundred mm. percent. So flooring one oh one says how it go, right? So you like uh so you bid out a job for square foot wise, right? Mm-hmm. Um and you break that down off a of square foot. So let's say you got a thousand square feet um let's figure you want to get it done in in uh in 20 hours so you got a thousand square feet 20 hours is like where you need it to be done in right to to make your to make your hundred dollars an hour Mm -hmm. um which is like what you you essentially you want to shoot for like a hundred dollars an hour when you're flooring because the the thing is is you have to pay for the salespeople to go get that job. You have to pay for the time to get the material and get on job site. You have to pay for all that back time. Mm-hmm. And then you got to pay for that hourly wage. So if you're only covering that guy's hourly wage, company's going to fail in a month. So, so your goal is to make $100 an hour while you're flooring and say, so it's going to take 20 hours. If your guys are efficient and good enough that they can get that done in 15 hours, then they could have like a competition against the other team. Like, hey, our shit was supposed to take 20 hours. It took 15. So we got it done in three quarters of the time. You know, the other team, whatever it is, right? Mm. I think it's based on days. Yeah. Yeah. Or based on like man hours. Because mm-hmm. then you can apply that to flips too. Customer jobs and flips. Exactly my point. Yeah. Mm, mm-hmm. I like yep. it. And then you could have like, so you got your sales team, you got those guys, and then you could have like your project managers who's who's like uh, uh, more effectively or like who's closing out more projects, mm-hmm. right? Or could you do like who's increasing like profit margins? You could do that too, yeah. Because I mean, if a team's getting it done faster, right? then the profit margin's going up. Ooh, another way could be who has less callbacks for warranty. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's a couple different like metrics you could do, mm-hmm. and uh, and I think you could have some fun with it. Yeah, you know, you also like that a little bit, don't you? I love that shit, dude. Mm. I love that shit. Mm. Yeah, I just miss that. I like we just don't. Goldstar doesn't have that. You want to start doing sales with us? Do I want to start doing sales? Yeah. I don't know. What do you mean? I don't know. What do you mean? Calling people and stuff. I'll just think about it. What's the what's worse? I do you remember that like person that called me and uh, tried to convince me to do their sales scheme. The marketing. 
Yeah. And you thought about doing it. I did. You thought well, about doing it. My main issue is I hate dealing with customers. Um, but it was a, this lady called me because I had my like resume out there or whatever. And she's like, you have tons of sale experience. And I was just like, no, I don't. She's like, you have worked in retail for five years. And I was right. like, yeah, I guess. And I do think their whole thing was like a scam though. Because you just like went out to businesses and tried to convince them to put their ad in this booklet thing or whatever. And then they had to pay like $40 to get the booklet with all the ads in it or something. It was something yeah, weird. It was, it was weird. And I had to drive. It was like a lot of driving. Mm. That was the other thing. But it would have been interesting to do it to like go learn like their sales tactics. I've listened to a lot. I know you have. I've listened to a lot of people. You know the number one recommendation? To just start doing it? No. Do you know what the number one recommendation for all people in sales is? Just start a conversation? Go get yourself a retail job. Part-time, work retail for a couple years, learn sales, learn talking with people, learn how to strike conversation, keep a conversation going, figure out people's pain points, what they want to buy, things like that, why they're in the store, things like that, and and, and, uh, work on becoming like a great salesman. Interesting. And I actually thought about like applying at Men's Warehouse. I remember back when I was like 25 Mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, I need to get better at sales. I didn't do it because I was like, I couldn't justify wasting wasting wasting. that kind of time. Yeah. But uh, the the other thing is like, I should have because that would have been education that I would have got paid for. No, one of the questions they ask you in their um, interview. Huh. I know, because two people... Men's Warehouse? Yeah. Oh, sure. Two people went and, got, uh, went and had interviews there. But one of the questions is, sell me this stapler. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And so one of the guys did a better job of selling the stapler than the other. Oh, man, I'd be fucking terrible. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so like that's one of their questions, and I was like, that makes a lot of sense. Like of all, like all the people that we've seen work there, it makes so much sense that they pass that question. Something in the stick there. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's. I think that's a good exercise for you to like work on. Right. And then Frank always taught me to like uh, pay attention to details. So that was like one thing he would try to get me to do all the time was like I specifically remember this one example. This lady walked in with a bag that said Thailand, maybe. Okay. It was some country that I had just been to when at, like after one of the trips. And he's just like, go ask her if she's been there before. And I was like super nervous. And I was like, I'm, 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 I can't do that, Frank. I can't. So then like while she was checking out, Frank was just like, oh, have you been to Thailand before? And she's like, oh, yeah, I just came back. And he's just like, oh, Sam also just went to Thailand. Oh, my God, dude. And then, yeah, so then me and her started talking about Thailand a little bit. There you go. Mm-hmm. Frank's so, the man, dude. Yeah, so it's just being observant of things like like when you go places, like paying attention to like what's in the background uh, or like what are they wearing, anything like that. Damn. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to be very observant if you want to be good at sales. Because think about it. Like if you walk into – um, I – don't i mean if you walk into a store or whatever like someone's business and you want to try and sell them whatever to be in their this ad book you see they have a poster of like different countries and then you can just ask like oh is this poster places you've traveled or places or places that people have come from and then you can just keep going off of that or if they have like a band poster and be like, oh, do you like that band? Right. Yeah, I love that band. Me too. Right. Yeah, especially look for things that like you have in common with them or you can like fake that you have in common with them. Right. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah. So anyways, I think you should start selling for us. <laughs> Dude, what did we found out? People will sell the women more than they will men. Yeah. How weird is that? Very weird. Fucking dude, actually, if you, yeah, like you, you and Brooke, if you and Brooke were the ones to negotiate buying houses. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty observant enough that I 
Like, so if it was just Brooke and I to go do, like, tours and stuff of houses, I'm pretty observant that I think I would be able to catch most things that, like, you would need for, like, a good estimate or quote. And you taking know, pictures. You know what? We could even do it. We could even fake it this way. I could just act like the contractor. Mm. Just giving you advice. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I buy houses. I flip houses. This is the contractor I use if it came, Sean. I don't know. <laughs> Technically, that's true. I mean, or I can just be the the bad B. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, I think you're better at striking up conversations with people. Who? Me. You're better at striking up conversations? No, I need to get better. Mm. You don't know how you do that? Uh, practice. Yep, there you go. I know. I need to start doing it at Wisco Rhea more. Mm-hmm. And I want to do it... One thing I liked about 75 Hard was it really pushed me to be more talkative while sober. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because, like, when I'm drinking more, I get very... I lean on drinking to become more talkative. Right. So, the nice thing about 75 Hard is I just had to force myself to do it because I couldn't... I couldn't just drink to make myself more talkative. Right. So, I think that... It's a thing I want to like probably do more at Whiskeria is to not drink, just because then I can get that practice of being more talkative, sober. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, it's bedtime for us. It's late. I have to go work tomorrow. You do not. No, but I probably will. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. Have a good weekend. See ya.